Tolga and Fatine have returned to Dying Light in an amazing quest that was totally unexpected in the best way. Today I'll be showing you how to get the quest and give you a walkthrough on how to complete it. However, there are a few things before we get started. This video will contain major spoilers for the quest line as I'll be showing all the cutscenes. I'll have timestamps for when the story points happen, but some things will include spoilers, so this is your warning in advance. Also, the visuals during the quest are not easy to look at for everyone and Techland even gives a warning about this. For a large portion of the quest line, things will be grey and blurry, this is intentional by Techland and not a bug. Lastly, the quest is not a short one. It took me about two and a half hours to complete. Granted, some of that was accidentally starting the Bloody Ties DLC and getting stuck in that for a bit, and getting stuck in a few other places as well. Without all of that, I say you could probably finish the quest anywhere in about an hour and a half to two hours. Now, let's get to the guide. Head over to the PK Floating Fortress and go to the quest board to find the quest Missing Person and activate it. St. Paul Island. This Michael guy might have bitten off more than he can chew. Huh, it wouldn't be the first time. He's a leap before you look kind of guy. I'm guessing you wrote this? I did. Sarah. A maiden. Uh, has he been gone long? Two days now. He hasn't checked in on the radio. It's not like him. He's a little reckless, but not stupid. Something's happened to him. You two are close, I take it. Not like that, but... Yeah, we go back. So I worry. Sure. He went to St. Paul Island? Well, I can try to find him. I... Thank you. I'll contact you if I hear anything. After the cutscene, fast travel to St. Paul Island and make your way towards the GRE Anomaly area. Find the generator near some green containers and go behind them to find a body. Sarah, uh, I found a body. It's, uh, very recent. I'm afraid it could be Michael. Shit. I... Okay. Can you describe him? Yeah, brown hair, beard. That's... That's not him. Michael's always clean-shaven. It's a thing with him. <sighs> Bad news for this guy. Good news for us, I guess. I'll keep looking. Now head to the Cedar Windmill to the southeast of your current location. Go into the covered shelter in the middle Can't and pick decide. up the radio on the bed. Looks recent. It could be Michael's. The radio's busted. Maybe that's why he didn't check in. After that, turn around and grab the map on the bench. The map? Oh, marks a spot nearby. Maybe I can find some tracks, see where he went. Follow the tracks to the blue door and head inside. Go all the way down the stairs and to the right to touch the portal. Make your way through the subway and you'll eventually get to the electrical room and go inside. You stay the fuck back. You're not getting me. Hey, whoa, easy. Just looking for a guy called Michael. Stay back. I know what you did. I know. Me? Look, I, I just want to find this guy. A woman called Sarah wants him found. Sarah? What are you? She's alive? Of course she's alive. I, I can take you to her. It if you're Michael. Oh no. It's happening again. What the hell is going on? More rifts. The infection spreads. Is there really no end to it? <laughs> After the cutscene, you'll need to fight off waves of virals and fighters. Just survive for about one minute until you get the marker to escape. Now just run back to the electrical room and go through the portal. Where the hell? Yes, yes, interdimensional rifts. That's obviously what they are. It's not obvious. These rifts could be intradimensional or temporal. You are always jumping to conclusions. It's getting weirder and weirder. How dare you? The data is conclusive. They are conduits between dimensions. Doorways, if you will. This is all highly hypothetical. We couldn't possibly confirm any of this without somebody foolish enough to risk exploring them. What the fuck? A fratine, some kind of perpetually confused vagrant has wandered in through the rift. Get rid of him at once. Let's not be too hasty, Tolga. He has functional limbs and presumably has mastered object permanence. He could be useful. 
What's your name, friend? My name's Aiden. Where the hell am I? Who are you? I am Tolga, and this is my brother Fatin. Now explain how and why you invaded our workshop. Yes, you must have knowledge of these rifts. Stop gawking and tell us what you know. I don't know. I was fighting the infected and then some kind of light appeared. Uh, looked a lot like that, actually. This should not be happening. You! Is this your doing? We need more data about this phenomenon. Fatih, you should examine it. You should examine it. I'll provide support. It's not hurting me. And if it brought me here, maybe... Hey, don't touch it! Use your paraglider as you're falling so you don't die. I didn't do that, so I died and had to respawn at the nearest metro. After the dialogue, head over to Jack and Joe's camp in Horseshoe. There's events on the way to the camp to help you get into the highest window with your paraglider. But if you don't have that, then you'll have to climb up there instead. Alright, now let's try this again. What's going on, fellas? We are obviously dealing with an interdimensional breach scenario. These topological distortions are becoming increasingly frequent. Oh, Tolga, look at him. He won't know what that means. He's a simple soul in need of guidance. Explain it in his own language. Yes, of course, you're right. Now, Aiden, imagine you are in your happy place. A slightly urine-soaked cardboard box in some filthy alleyway, perhaps. To you, it seems like a mansion. Yes? You two must get punched a lot. Now, that box is your whole world. But outside of it, there are many other things. And one day, somebody punches a hole through the wall of your box. As the sunlight blinds you, you gibber in confusion because you have never seen it before. All you know is the box and its comforting smells. You cannot cope. And as you cower in fear, unable to deal with the implications of what is happening, new holes appear. To your primitive brain, this is terrifying. All right, yeah, I get it. Holes bad. Get to the point. We need to investigate further. That's why we've prepared these spectral goggles. They will let you see the rifts. As a bonus, they will also obscure your features, something the rest of us will appreciate. Beyond that, all you need to do is use your core skill. Meaning? You need to touch things. That's it? Just touch the anomalies? See? I told you he would be perfect for the job. So adaptive. Look, the last time I touched one of those things, I almost turned into a stain on a sidewalk. And yet, here you are, except without the data we need. Next time, you'll be better prepared. You're welcome. Now go stick your fingers into things until something interesting happens. Get us that data. Meanwhile, some of us have real work to do. After the cutscene, equip the new goggles. Everything will be gray and blurry except for the portals you need to go to, which will be blue beacons. Head to the first one to the west of where you just were. It will be at the edge of Houndfield inside the building you get to. Go through the front and then turn to the right to get to the portal. In this area, you'll fight off a Revenant, which is not a difficult fight, but if you die, you just respawn and keep fighting until you defeat it. Head to the next beacon located to the southeast. This will take you to the Forsaken store on the edge of Cory and in Houndfield near the electrical station. Once you get inside, if it's daytime, there will be some volatiles there. You can either fight them and clear the room or just run upstairs. Once you get upstairs, jump onto the hanging lights and enter the portal. You will appear underwater, so just swim up and look for the opening in the wall. Just follow the path all the way to the end and enter the next portal. Now head to the southeast to the swimming pool in Quarry End. The portal is going to be on top of the building, so make sure you don't try to go inside if you have the first blood quest, as that will force you to start the Bloody Ties DLC, and you can't get out of it until you finish that mission. Once you go through the portal, you'll be in a room where you move extremely slowly with old distorted music playing. Just get to the other side of the room and go through the next portal. After the dialogue, fast travel to downtown and head to the next beacon on the dam to the southwest and enter the portal. 
In this area, make your way to the third section and then use the upside down car to jump over to the observatory platform. Jump on the higher platform to the left and enter the dome. Then jump through the other opening onto the platform of the second observatory. Now just follow the path to the left until you get to another opening with the portal on the other side and enter the portal. Head southeast from there to the next beacon which is on the bridge next to Shen's camp and enter the portal. You'll be in Tolga and Fatine's workshop but you're tiny. Climb on the shelves to reach the next portal and go through it. Head east from your position past the VNT tower and towards Lower Dam Ire. When you arrive there will be zombies around the portal. Either take them out or ignore them and enter the portal. You appear in the metro station from the very beginning of the mission but now have become Super Aiden. Defeat all the enemies in the area and go near the portal for Michael to pop out. Defeat him and enter the portal. Now head back to Tolga and Fatine in the same place you met them before to get the next cutscene. I'm back. Are we any closer to figuring this out? Of course, of course! We now know that these rifts are not just random occurrences. They're doorways, Aiden. Doorways that lead to other dimensions. So your little escapade was a jaunt along the edges of our reality. But it's not a pleasure cruise. Unless we secure these doorways, there is a definite danger of our universe collapsing completely. I... Well, okay. I'm... I'm just gonna assume you know what you're doing. How do we fix this? Why? We close the rifts and secure our reality. For that, we need some special technology. Fortunately, it turns out that we have already completed the design phase. We have drawn up the plans, but this is where things get complicated. The plans are in a cave, on the drafting table there. We know that cave, but we don't know uh, which cave it is precisely. Or which iteration of Tolga and Fatin drew up those plans. So by you, you mean other versions of you in other dimensions? It's complicated. Don't worry about it. I've seen something like that already. There was this guy, Michael. He was missing, and I was... Yes, yes. That cuts down on the need for explanations. You will need these gloves. They'll allow you to move through the rifts without... Well, without random space shifts. All right, now give me the part that's gonna suck. Well, uh, the cave... Um... The target location is somewhat uncertain. It might require some zeroing in. Oh, he'll be fine. He'll get us our plans and stitch together the fabric of reality. Or we'll all die in uncomprehending agony as reality collapses around us. Just get us those plans. Let us do the thinking. No pressure, huh? Equip the new gloves you received and fast travel to Quarry End. Now just follow the blue beacon until you reach the hatch on the ground. This is the same one from the end of the dark mission if you sided with the PKs. Make sure to scan the hatch as you can't open it without doing that. Drop down and follow the path until you reach the big subway area. In here there are lots of glowing green balls, you need to grab them and throw them into the rift on the other side of the station from where you entered. You'll need a total of 6 to stabilize the portal and enter it. You'll emerge in a cave with some zombies. Defeat a few of them and you'll see more portals open up. Taking the one in the back left of the cave should get you to the final area, but I went through the other portals, so I'll show you those. The first portal you open up, you'll be in the same cave but with a hive and two volatiles. You'll need to defeat two of them for the next portal to appear, which is in the middle on the right hand side. This time you'll be in the cave again, but there will be tables and equipment set up like a lab. Use your survivor sense and grab all three items off the ground to open a portal in the back left of the cave and go through it. Now it will be back in the lab cave again, but with more things to grab. The blueprint is on the poster board to the left of all the tables. Grab it and then go through any of the portals that opened up. Now head back to Tolga and Fatine for another cutscene. Well, I stole the plants from your evil twins. Or good twins. I don't know. I wouldn't overthink it. Let's see them. Enjoy. Incredible. This... This surpasses even our most optimistic predictions. Our genius shines brightly in all possible realities. Look at the penmanship. Just as exquisite as ours. So, what's the next step? Now, we build. These plans hold the solution to our little anomaly crisis.
equip the new boots you got, and head to the beacons. These will be in the same exact locations as earlier in the video, so I'll just show you what to do in them in the same order as I did before. In the Northern Houndfield portal, three elemental goons will spawn. Each one you defeat will open a new portal. To find the right one, listen to the ringing sound and enter the one that is the loudest. This will make you spawn in a dark room with three demolishers to fight. This actually freaked me out at first since they just appeared out of the darkness for me. Once they're defeated, look for the collectible with the loudest ringing again and enter the portal. In the Southern Houndfield portal, you'll appear in the Twisted Church again. The goal for this one is to just keep going down. It's very easy to get turned around in this section, but if you just look down for holes that continue further, then you'll get through without too much trouble. When you get down far enough, you'll start to see portals again, just head to the one with the loudest ringing. Now you're back in the same area, but with all the water drained. You need to climb all the way back up to the top. It's still easy to get turned around, but just continue to go up and you'll get there. When you do get close to the top, you'll hear the ringing again. Go to the highest point and grab the item from the ceiling and go through the portal below you. In the swimming pool portal, you'll be back in the room where you move extremely slowly and the music playing is distorted. Head for the portal in the back of the room as that has the loudest ring. You'll appear in the same room but with some items to pick up. Grab the one in the back that looks like a crystal as that's the one that's ringing and then go through the new portal. In the portal on the dam, you'll have another parkour puzzle. Just go straight in front of you and reach the last platform and go through the portal. You'll be in a similar puzzle but it's a bit different this time. You want to go to the third platform that has the upside down car. From there, you want to jump on all the floating vehicles until you can make it to the observatory platform. Now, just follow the path to the left side of using the platforms and swing bars to get to the top. Once there, the item will be on top of the satellite, so just parkour up to grab it and then go through the portal. In the Shins Camp Bridge Portal, you'll be tiny in Tolgan Fatin's workshop again. Climb to the portal that's on top of the hanging lights, as that has the ringing. Now, climb to the top of the shelves on the other side of the room to get the ringing item and go through the new portal. In the Eastern Garrison Portal, you'll be back in the original subway station from the beginning of the mission and have your Super Aiden form. Defeat all the Michaels that show up and go through the portal with the loudest ringing. You'll appear in the same room again, however, near the open portal will be some items. Grab the one that's ringing and head back through the portal. Now, head back to Tolgan Fatin for another cutscene. that this will work flawlessly, Fatim. Absolutely, Tolga. With a few unexpected side effects, of course. So? Tolga, did you open that? No. This is unexpected. Step away from the machine. What the hell? Is that another version of me? Another Aiden? Look, we don't have the time to babysit two incompetents. Stand aside. We. Fatim, uh. no! I'm sorry. I can't allow you to do this. Too much is at stake. Fatim, come on. He's gone. It's over. You can get up now. Tolga. Tolga, come on. He's. You think I don't know? You find him. You kill him! Killed? Kill myself? This is insane! Your double, wherever he comes from, wants to keep us from fixing the anomalies. That means he is behind them. He is making our reality collapse. And how do I find him? Me. Th this version of me. Now he has the machine. I can track it. And by extension, him. So you hunt him down. You kill him. You bring the machine back, I fix everything. Is this too complicated for you? Tolga. About fatigue. No. We are working now. These will let you stabilize the anomalies. You have to locate three anomalies and move them to exactly where I say. Once you have done that, a rift will open to where the machine is. Look for the anomalies in the downtown area. I'll contact you later with the coordinates for where to place them. Now go. I need to do something. Fast travel to the downtown metro as all three anomalies are very close. I went to these based on the nearest one, so once you grab the first one, you'll get a marker for the top of building. 
ride the zipline near you and when you get to the top use the next zipline to go to the next building and climb up that. Once you get on top of that one just jump and open your paraglider to pick up a draft and carry yourself to the beacon. Now head to the beacon directly north of you. The item will be on the roof of a building. The marker will point to the top of another building. I had to use my grappling hook to get there and then follow the parkour path until I could jump onto the broken billboard on the adjacent building. Then using my grappling hook again, I got back to the marker building and climbed all the way to the top to get the anomaly. Head to the final beacon to the east. You get a marker for another tall building. I used the smaller one in front of me to get more height so I could climb the building I needed to and then just follow the parkour path to the top. Once you activate the anomaly, a new portal will open up for you to go through. Now there will be a cutscene that plays that ends in a choice and I'll show you both of them. It's never an easy thing seeing one of you. It's not like looking in the mirror. It's the same, but not the same. Yeah, it just feels wrong, you know? Yeah, it's weird. It's creepy. For what it's worth, and I know it's not much, I am sorry you have to go through this. It's not you. It's the infection. I'm just trying to keep it from spreading by destroying an entire universe. But the thing is, your universe doesn't just stay in your universe. It pokes through reality's weak points. You've seen things coming through, right? So, there's a nice, clean, non-infected universe over there. And then here's your sick, virus-laden universe. All it takes is one rift, one little incursion, and you've got a patient zero over there. Boom, scratch off the planet. Ah, shit. Even you're infected in this universe. Maybe you'll be the patient zero somewhere else. Yeah, okay, I get that. I do. But Tolga's machine's gonna fix it. Make it so nothing comes in or out. You don't have to do this. Would you gamble an entire universe? Countless universes on that hope. No. You deal with the infection by eradicating it. So you just murder everybody in an entire universe just like that? Your Earth has, what, thousands? A few million people left alive tops? A planet without infection has billions. Listen, I know it's awful. I know. But you've seen what the infection does. We can keep it from spreading. Look at the big picture. Let go of your diseased reality and save billions like it. This anomaly, we make it unstable and this infected universe is gone. All it takes is a bit of kinetic energy aimed at the right point, and a chain reaction will collapse it completely. One hit, one strike, and all those other universes are safer. There has to be another way. Not that I can see. So what are you gonna choose? Hope or certainty? believe I'm saying this, but you're right. Maybe I'll go to hell for this. But it's gotta be worth it if it keeps the virus from spreading. You've been in hell your entire life, Aiden. But this way, you stop that hell from spreading. Tolga said you have to die. Until right now, I wasn't so sure. I know. Those hard calls get a lot easier when you get some perspective, huh? Fuck. 
Now you'll need to fight off several doppelgangers. Eventually you do turn into Super Aiden and finish all of them off. Interact with the machine to enter the next cutscene. You talked about the infection. But how many people did you kill with these anomalies? Well, Toga, I guess we saved everyone. I'm coming home. <sighs> what the? Hello? Anyone here? Some kind of perpetually confused vagrant has wandered in through the rift. <laughs> After this, you get a chest and these two collectibles. When you open the chest, you'll get some kind of crafting resource. I ended up getting scraps. Now you'll also have all the pieces of the spectral set from the quest line. What do you think of this quest and which ending did you pick or which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. For more Dying Light content, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. And if you want to see other kinds of games, then check out my second channel, RG Reimagined, linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.